First binary jazz of 2020, uh, and the first binary jazz of the 2020s. Uh, I'm Chris. That's Gary, and this is Allison, and we do a show that's about things. Uh, I was thinking this morning. I was wondering if um, um, whether whether we'd be doing this in 10 years. Whether we'll have a 2030 episode, and we'll be like, "Wow, decade in review. How many things did we actually?" learn in 10 years will will podcasting be um available in 10 years probably i don't know i want to say i it hope so be. some corporation is going to figure out some way to uh own it entirely and it will be too expensive for people like us the podcast I, I just as i'm talking i'm realizing that i have like a grinch hand over my head right now <laughs> yeah. i don't want to point that out i thought that was like your vibe it's definitely um, playing to the vibe yeah <laughs> it's fair. I we'll think talk about the Grinch for a minute. <laughs> I think that even if podcasting, if our podcast has gone by the wayside, we should get together and just do a really random release episode in 2030. Okay. It's fair. But just pretend as if nothing has happened. <laughs> Set a reminder to record Binary Jazz on January 1st, 2030. <laughs> Holy shit, it worked. <laughs> they're like yes you will have this watch for the rest of your life uh is well now a, it's in my apple system so say, like whatever apple, apple thing i'm on yeah. yeah it'll be added to all my things i did this last year uh, something like that last year I, my kids were playing the game jinx you know if you say something at the same time you say jinx the person can't talk and it was getting out of hand so i put a one-year ban on jinx in my house and they're like how will you know when it's a year i said i'll put it in my watch so i did and my watch misunderstood me. I said, remind me about Jinx in a year. And it said, I will remind you about drinks in a year. So sometime <laughs> in August, my watch is going to be like, don't forget about drinks. Remember drinks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's cool. Uh, we do an annual Christmas party that's like a cookie party at our house. That um, sounds so Everybody that brings sounds cookies. Legit. Isn't that awesome? I, I'm Rhonda down with a cookie ago. party. It's great. So some years it's been wilder than others. Some years we've had like um, wilder gingerbread houses and kids decorating them and drunk adults helping. And so there's like, I find like gumdrops stuck to my wall when we're done. Like it's a pretty crazy <laughs> party. I'm not exaggerating. Like it's, it's wild. It's the day of the year when the kids are allowed to eat like anywhere. We have hard floors. So like their bedroom, like, well, just hopefully find all the crumbs and vacuum them up and you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of- Cause the adults aren't this gonna year be watching little... for themselves. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah, apparently not. Um, <laughs> well, it's kind of mayhem. And so, um, you know, some years we've had as many as like 40 people in the house. Uh, and it's, you know, which means it's like standing room only and people are going in the garage, getting beer out of the fridge. And we have, you know, spiked hot chocolate or uh, other drinks. And people that don't drink don't have to drink. It's just a fun, silly time. And we usually schedule it for two hours. And usually people are here until midnight. You know, it's good. It's a good time. It's a party. Um, Anyway, the theme this year was the Grinch. So that's why there's a Grinch hand behind my head. I haven't, we haven't taken it down yet. But there's also like a Grinch on the wall where the kids did pin the heart on the Grinch, um, blindfolded. Um, there were like little Grinch, like the tags that said like what the different finger foods were, were like little Grinches. My son built the stands for them out of Legos. Uh, and the nice part is you bring cookies and you take, bring, we put out bags so you can take like all sorts of cookies with you. So it's not about like eating all these cookies now. If you take cookies home with you and this year we actually only had, we usually have like a silly amount left. This year we only had a couple uh, bags, a couple bags <laughs> left. I mean like gallon sized bags. Of cookies. I mean, years past it's like, oh, we need to go find somewhere to give these cookies to because there's no way we'll eat them all. Um, and I think we only have like a few. It's been good this year, not as many. Uh, but so that's the cookie party. What's the most interesting type of cookie that showed up? Mmm. You know, I don't know this year because I was, um, 
Oh, apparently drunk. I was uh, um, <laughs> entertaining. I don't know. I don't know what that most interesting time was this year. Maybe, you know, my sister-in-law did this thing with Ritz crackers dipped in chocolate. Mm. That All right. had something something in the middle. I don't remember what. Um, I, we like to make, I think we've talked about the uh, apple ginger cookies that uh, my kids like. Mm-hmm. They're vegan. Uh, and so those, those are always popular. I took those to our local... Um, WordPress meetup, and uh, I always like put those cookies out. I'm like, oh yeah, enjoy the apple ginger cookies. And then like after they're half gone, I'm like, oh yeah, they're vegan. Like I wait to drop that, you know. Um, and uh, and like people are like, hey, send me the recipe. I don't, I don't really know it. It's you know, put a bit of this. Glasses, put a bit of that. It's apple. Uh, some other stuff. I rarely tell people my cookies are like vegan or gluten free unless somebody like asks because they have some sort of need. Because otherwise, I'm like, look, it's a cookie. I brought cookies. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I really like doing it after people have eaten some, and they're like, oh, these are great. Like, I don't usually like fruit cookies, and I'm, that's when I like to kind of drop the <laughs> zing. Oh, yeah, and they're vegan. Yeah, and and then it was always like comes the question like, are you vegan? No, these are just damn good cookies. Is my answer like. <laughs> I feel like it's like, you know, I don't know. That's their title. It's not even apple ginger cookies. It's, no, they're damn good cookies. I should should do the rest of it, I should say, yeah. Yeah. So we have Uh, a tradition. We have an annual curry buffet uh, uh, based on the Bridget Jones Diary uh, turkey curry buffet that they do on New Year's Day. Oh, nice. Um, We decided we needed a New Year's Day tradition. We did it early this year because my parents are here this week. Mm -hmm. Um, So we did it uh saturday because they maybe we did it sunday night and yeah we did it sunday night because we were getting home on saturday um and uh so much like bridget jones diary where she you know her mom invites everybody even remotely related to them we invite zero people <laughs> and it is a curry buffet for just the four of us i was about to be like wait but <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I mean, I can get behind this. This whole idea yeah. has me written all over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thought you'd appreciate it. Uh, it's also not a turkey curry buffet and we don't make it. We go to an Indian or get a get to take out from an Indian place and kind of put it out and say, try all the things. It's the, all the things. It's the most important part. <laughs> yeah. We got like five different curries and then we got some pakoras and samosas. Nice. Since, since coming back from Sri Lanka, I've decided that pakoras are my favorite Indian uh, or, yeah. you know, Southeast Asian sort of like appetizer food. Mm-hmm. As it used to be samosas because that's the thing, but like I had pakoras in, in Sri Lanka and they're amazing and I just, I was like, that's all I want now. Yeah. How long did the leftovers last? When we leftovers? Get... <laughs> yeah, not, not very. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it, with, with, since we got more stuff for the, for the annual curry buffet, we still have like a little bit of doll left. Um, that I will probably have for lunch today. Um, but uh, normally, um, uh, normally we have like maybe the next day's lunch worth when we get Indian stuff. And like the le- next mm-hmm. day's lunch st- worth for like me and Aaron. Like there's not usually very much left. Oh, wow. Yeah. I feel like I'm eating leftovers. What is today? Today's the second. I feel like I'm eating leftovers from like the 20. Uh, 21st that's the thing too Uh, since my parents have been over we've been getting food out a lot so we've got like a fridge Mm -hmm. full of like stuff that we have gotten at various places over the last week incidentally ringing in the new year the right way now we've talked about food i am hungry i will be eating (laughs) our topic i wonder what leftovers are still out there yeah topic today is what did you oh did you intro how this show works i don't remember uh no uh it's 2020 i'm just gonna yellow it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who knows i don't even like know how this show works to be honest <laughs> something something clarity of vision love it something. i think i mentioned i was going to make like vision jokes all year long and then i realized after i said that like i'm not going to put a lot, a lot of effort into them either so they're going to be half-assed vision jokes all year excellent long. that's good yeah all year oh you wouldn't want whole ass i mean it's uh, 2020 jokes. all year so or at least until i forget about it whichever comes first <laughs> So mid-February. Probably, yeah, I was going to say, probably about three months. 
<laughs> like uh, January 9th to be done <laughs> next <All right>. episode. <laughs> you said. Yeah. That's all right. I mean, whatever. <clears throat> is this the part? Is, or is yeah, this a topicless episode? Ooh. No, we can we can have a topic. <laughs> we can have a topic. Okay. So wait. Oh, I lost my tab. Oh. Doop. Okay. Um, the topic this week is Amida or Amida. I might be adding a bit of Spanish flair to it, <laughs> but I like Amida, so we're gonna go with that. Amida. Um, A M I T A. Amita. Oh. It is a kind of nut. A kind of nut. The Amida nut. I- it grows on the Amida okay. trees. Where does it fall in the hierarchy of nuts? Like cashew macadamia level or? Uh, it's, um, well, you know, it's softer, sort of like a pecan, right? Um, but an easier shell to get into. An easier shell. Yeah, well, I mean, like, so you can so like barehand a pecan, you know? Well, I don't, the only shell I really deal with with nuts is usually just peanuts or um, pistachios. Everything else is, yeah. is like shelled, yeah, pre-shelled. <laughs> Except for I, walnuts, I guess. Like oh, around Christmas time, sometimes walnuts are floating around. You don't have that like ran- maybe this is oh this is fun. You don't have that like random bowl of nuts that's hanging around your house around this time of year. We did have a ran- We did have we had well we had a random like Costco container of nuts that we've been hanging on to for I don't know how long, and we put it out yesterday because we had um, Aaron's parents and my parents came over, and so they're like, oh yeah, nuts they don't go bad. Um, but they've been sitting in the plastic container for like two years, so like they're a little bit not good. Um, Aaron tried a few, and like, yeah, this is going in the trash. Um, so yeah, we did have the random bowl of nuts, and then we tossed it in the trash because they were bad. Because <laughs> they were but no. We, we put it. We put out different nuts. Okay. The Amita nut. I remember growing up. At the Amita nuts. Yeah. Yes. The Amita nuts are, my, are the backup. Fast, there was like a bowl and like a nut. What do you call it? The nut. Cracker. Cruncher thing? I don't know. Cracker. That's a good it's word a for it. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. Yes, it's a nutcracker, obviously. <laughs> I was so like, the nutcracker's there... laying next to it, along with like a metal pick that looks like a like a surgical implement. And that just was always at my grandmother's house. I assume the nuts were out year-round, but apparently they're not. It's like a holiday thing because they were not there year-round. Um, we don't do the nuts. And... Uh, I don't know that anybody I've seen any of them, any other ones like hanging around since since she passed. But I always just thought it was just like a thing that like just I don't know as an adult like you just went to the store and you got your nuts and got your nutcracker and your surgical implement and just set them out for a month. I didn't or I guess I assume they were always there. I don't know. I don't know what I thought. But anyway, pecans are a pain in the nuts <laughs> to shell. I don't. I don't know. He said, I'm still back on the idea that there's a better word for nutcracker than nutcracker. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, no, no, Um, that's, it's too, too civilian. We need to make it a fit. Get my nose. (laughs) Well, I could see me asking for the nut cruncher if I was trying to open them, you know? Hey, hand me the nut cruncher. I can't get into this pecan. This pecan. So the Amida... Is a it's a native, oh yeah there's a topic it's a Native American tribe uh, that hmm. uh, ranged from uh, what is currently Illinois to uh, um, Montana, uh, sort of a midwestern uh, wow. tribe, and uh, with the range yeah and <laughs> they uh, so there is a town in somewhere called Amitaville and the and Amitaville is notable for its uh, annual hauntings um, for the Amitaville murders um, is it uh, where is it though? where uh, the, the tribe of, of <laughs> I feel like I would have heard about this <laughs> the tribe of Native Americans uh, were killed in some uh, battle with uh, western uh, traveling uh, pioneers. It's a stark tale of uh, reality, really. Yeah. 
the what did you say the name of the town was? Amitaville. Okay. I kept I, I could hear Jimmy Buffett in my head when you said that for some reason and I like uncomfortable and I couldn't figure out why. Amitaville makes sense. Yeah. I don't I mean it's no less uncomfortable, but it makes sense. It's the only Jimmy Buffett song I can name. Yeah. He's pretty popular around these parts. Like is he does old he people live in there? Florida is he like from him. There? Oh yeah, that. But is this I don't know. I mean, I, he lived in, he just, he's lived around here, not around here, but the Keys at some point. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. I think now he lives in like a chain of crappy hamburger places international. That's probably Jack, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Amita or Amita. 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 It's, 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 about, it's about three feet, Amita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so satisfying to see your faces like. What? Crap. <laughs> this guy. Oh. <laughs> Don't, I can't follow that up with anything. Amida. Uh, Amida. We're going to have a lot of fun in 10 years. Amida. <laughs> but what if we haven't spoken in like five years? What if there was some sort of drastic fallout and then we're like, oh, we have to do the reunion show? <laughs> I don't know. It'll be okay. I'm not really so a big drastic fallout person, are you? Well, the fallout would be if, listen to this though, what if Chris gets chosen to go to space <laughs> and you don't? <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, uh, I, would, I would support Chris happily. I would be sad for myself, but I don't really need fallout from it. I'd probably harass him for like details on everything. Exactly. You'd be FaceTiming all the time. You'd be, be like, FaceTiming the leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah, FaceTiming the space station it, all the time. Yeah, we'd be FaceTiming from the space station, yep. <laughs> and this is where we do the, the thingy with the other thingy. Um, so we ran out of stuff to watch uh, on when we were in, uh, when we went up to the Pacific Northwest to visit Aaron's family. So we started watching. So you watched For All Mankind? No, we didn't because we, uh, we don't have Apple TV Plus thing. Um, so we started watching uh, obsessed, Documentary sure. Now. On Netflix. Um, oh, doc- that's a good one. Yeah, so it's only a few episodes, all right? It's like ten a season, and there's like three seasons. So we got through season one, and I think we're like most of the way through season two now. Um, so yeah, the fallout reminded me of um, the episode that they do. Is that the one where there's a um, the crappy uh, the crappy seventy? Yeah, because the crappy seventies band. Um, oh. so, um, so it's basically like a parody of every, like one hit wonder seventies band ever. Um, and, and then there's like, you know, the one, the one guy wants to get more money and do more, like, you know, get bigger. And the other guy is like, no, I just want to make music and, and I don't want to like sacrifice our, our values or whatever. And they have this big falling out on stage and, uh, and then. They never talk to each other until they're inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And that's the first time they actually talk to each other. And it's incredibly awkward. And, 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 and the one guy has like, he owns all the rights to everything, the band. So he, he like has made like wine coolers uh, that are themed after the band. And so he gives uh, the other guy a four pack of the wine coolers as a like, hey man, here. And a little peace offering. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, I think being a one-hit wonder might be the worst thing in the world, right? Like, especially if it's a song that's sort of, like, not your core style. Because it's obvious that, like, people heard your other stuff and were like, oh. So probably your one hit is not your core musical that's, voice. Yeah. So, so that, well, unless you're, um, so we're also watching uh, Battlestar Galactica again now. We, when we got home, we started watching BSG. Um, and now that one dude that plays Gaius Baltar, I don't know his name. I just know him as Gaius Baltar, but he also is in, uh, Bridget Jones Diary. So unless, so, I mean, and his character in Bridget Jones Diary is, uh, a musician who, who only, um, did, he did one, he did one, one hit wonder. And his big thing is like, he's only performed one song that's popular and he's milking that fame for as much Mm -hmm as he possibly can so anytime so people go hey are you that guy he's yes yes no plans to record anything else <laughs> um though so, so unless so i was going to say unless your guy is baltar that's, 
that's an interesting point. I realized um, I did not take into account the um, uh, the role capitalism would play in squashing any artistic integrity to ride that song to death. So, who's your favorite person that's like considered a one hit wonder? Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> but like he goes to sh- like he I plays mean, shows of entire <laughs> albums, and I can't name any song. of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you mean? Yeah. Do you mean that? Do you mean favorite artist who is a one hit wonder who I appreciate for their one hit, or favorite artist who is a one hit wonder but I appreciate their entire back catalog? Well, I originally meant the first one, but now I'm interested in the second one. Because <laughs> I have several that fall into the second category. Uh, where you're like, no, no, I, mean, I like, yeah. like you're the person that likes Tin Machine, and you're like, David Bowie's okay. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I do like Tin Machine, but I wouldn't say David Bowie's just okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Space Hog, uh, one hit wonder for Meantime, in the, in the meantime, uh, Harvey Danger, one hit wonder oh. for Flagpole Sitta, which is falls into your category oh. falls into your category gary of like this song sounds nothing like anything else they do um, oh, okay. yeah that's a really good point actually i was i'm sitting here going like i don't know if i can name any one hit wonders but okay keep going i'm along <laughs> for the ride okay so what else what else is a one hit wonder um those are the two that 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 pop that pop up uh most easily if i can think of but i is, there has to be a one-hit wonder playlist on Spotify, I'm right? Sure. Oh, definitely. Um, and it so, definitely it includes oh, oh, Elo oh. I Wish. Aha. Aha is, a, is also a really good uh, one-hit wonder band because everybody only knows Take On Me, but that entire album is freaking awesome. Ooh, um, I should go listen to that. Stun Only yeah. Shines on TV. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a three-hour and six-minute 48 song playlist. I feel like this is not complete. <laughs> no. Um, okay, so favorite one hit wonder as a one hit wonder. The safety dance, Robert. men without hats. <laughs> That's not dance on my if list. You want oh, uh, Men at Work. Uh, that was a good album, too. Um, where you, we live from, and we come from a land down under. Yeah, that was a good album. Um, no, favorite, that favorite one hit wonder as a one hit wonder is probably I Want Candy. Oh. Because, hmm. like, I could go, like, yeah, there's just too many other bands that I, I can name. Like, like no, but there's other songs besides that one. Mm-hmm. So, in, uh, Amita I mean, this has got some fun things on it. Chumba Wumba Tub Thumping. What is it? Uh, Amita is another word for a one hit wonder. <laughs> oh. It's, it's actually I wonder what, what it one really hit, means. It's actually what one hit wonders were called before they were called one hit wonders. Amitas. Yeah. Just Amitas. <laughs> is, it, is it a. Is it a food? No, it's not a food. Okay. Well, uh, uh, but I'm interested in this with this one hit wonder playlist. You'll have to share it with us, and then we can um, we can share it on the on the oh, show notes. I'll, uh, I'll drop it in. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of wondering. Drop it on the line. I'm kind of wondering how much of my music taste is just one hit wonders. <laughs> this is not. I feel like we could do a much better job than this. <laughs> well, we've already named like five bands. I know. And when you say we, you mean you, and we're very okay, proud of fair. you and supportive. Of <laughs> I, you're right. I didn't. I didn't really mean we. I meant the corporate. <laughs> <laughs> the real we, meaning Chris. But like, I was talking to someone once, and they referred. Um, they were talking about madness, our house, and they were saying, oh. but in a very one-hit wondery sort of way. And I was like, madness had like. A bajillion albums and like tons of other songs and yeah yeah thompson twins could probably fall into that category too and, and... we're just like just the, i don't know that's... yeah that's just the song that you've heard though yeah <laughs> no, I was, I, in my mind i was I, just obviously like, oh. everybody I mean, the... but i was like but i'm pretty sure there were other songs that were like yeah hits to the public as well so i was like it's not just me that likes mad <laughs> <laughs> what about um what's the, i don't even know the i think i think the best one hit wonders are the ones i can name the song but not the band like uh who did one step beyond oh that's madness okay never mind <laughs> totally that they're totally illegit and not a one hit wonder <laughs> they're disqualified see in my head i thought they did but then i was like that's not them i'm almost positive now i'm guessing second guessing myself no no it's madness no you're right yeah. It just doesn't sound the same as our house and so it doesn't yeah. Um, 
Amita. Amita. Should I do the grand reveal? It's a piece of fish. Not the whole fish, just a piece of it. <laughs> just it's just, the Amita. It's like right under the dorsal fin. Right, right. Oh, I thought it was behind the gills. <laughs> I would. It's like a, a absurd and yet exactly the kind of thing that I would bring to the table. So <laughs> I can't uh, can't argue too much <laughs> with that. Um, Amita is your father's sister. It's Latin. Like yeah, I, I'd like to. The, I, I so, hold on. So, I, so I think is, that Allison is, is guessing, my, and she knows the topic. This does not bode well for her. This is this is my She's sister. Like, I just found the word, and this is my other sister, Amita. Because I was looking into, I was looking into words for family members, because um, like nibblings is one. It's like the gender neutral term for nieces and nephews. Nibblings. Okay. Wait, is this like an honest answer? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were kidding. I thought you were getting in on the guessing with us. No, (laughs) nibblings is like a thing. Amita is your father's sister. So like, for instance, because I was trying to find... Your your, your paternal aunt. Yeah. Because I was trying to find... um, I was just... I was looking up stuff for nieces and nephews, and then I was like, oh, that's funny. So like, for my brother's kids, I'm the Amita, um, which I thought was kind of funny. So I was just like, maybe we can like trick them into thinking that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> or, or that your name is Allison Amita. Yeah, I'm just being like, that's a thing. I don't know. I just thought it was or so funny. Or Amita Allison. Yeah, Amita Allison. You could be anonymous, Aunt Amita. And that, and, yeah, you know, Aunt Amita. Really just like, but that's, I thought it was that's really, where I, I'd go with it. I think it's interesting because that and Old English have really specific um, family tree like hierarchy for aunts and uncles and stuff like that but then we chose to use the french version which are just like it kind of loses the lineage which i thought was interesting Hmm. i don't know let me say this this is peduncle level uh topic today very well done (laughs) in a good way or a bad way oh no in a very good way i'm i'm (laughs) I'm sitting here somewhat flabbergasted and i have learned a thing so i won't bring too many like latin terms to the table because i realize you could just go down that rabbit hole but i thought this one was cool i mean we almost always go down that rabbit hole anyway yeah and it's, we, it doesn't matter if it's latin or not we're still gonna make something up that's latin basically just realize most things in my life aren't applicable to most people's lives <sighs> and well, now the allison questions we do have allison questions yeah uh, I was going to go through this. Uh, this one is uh, from November 25th in the last decade. Twenty. Wow. knows what I was thinking back then. Yeah. Way to hang uh, on to that one, Chris. Yeah, I know. We've been holding <laughs> back. Uh, what time being told no inspired you the most? Huh. I have one that's not uh, when I was told no specifically. No. (laughs) (laughs) The dog's like, I don't know what's going on. Dog does not feel inspired. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, so it didn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't called, it wasn't, I wasn't told no specifically. um, But uh, when I worked, uh, when I did um, tech support for Albertsons uh, for their, their stores um i i went out of my um sort of jurisdiction and got help on a unix problem um from like some dudes in a in a uh, irc channel that i i hung out in that was totally unrelated to work um and uh as a result of solving that problem um with their help um i was i was called by the tier three lead guy Uh, a cowboy Um, and for a very long time it 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 really pissed me off because I felt like a I'm never gonna be tier three now because that's what he thinks of me Um, and b like why the hell am I a cowboy when I actually got the job done and fixed the thing like it's not the way that it's supposed to be done but I fixed the problem and that's what we're here for like you know, otherwise it wasn't going to get solved. Um, and then eventually over time, I decided to just own that and, and make it like, you know, 
a good thing like repurpose that label and like yeah okay so i'm a cowboy and i guess cowboy means getting shit done when no one else will or in in a way that no one else is able to do and like just like sure i'll be a cowboy and 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 it also that also partially inspired me to leave that fucking job because it sucked so um yeah that's the most important part that all makes sense Ugh, cowboy Cowboy, cowboy is a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're out there in the wild west. I mean, I was. There's, there ain't, <laughs> ain't nobody else. Ain't some nobody else gonna help me. Yeah, I was just sending some song earlier about. Oh, how did it go? I need to. I need to dig that back up in Spotify in a little while. It was a very strange song. I'm not really sure how it ended up <laughs> in my ears, but it was like when a cowboy dies. I need to find this song. It'll be the gem for the day. It was the one hit wonder. It must be if you can't name the song or the artist. I, I've never heard it before in my life until today. Sometimes the and algorithm happened, brings and I us. Was like, oh yeah. Well, and I break the algorithm a lot by doing silly things, you know, like I'm like in this whole Americana kick. And then I'm like, oh, but Katie got this weird Bluetooth microphone for Christmas. So let's throw in like some really zany kid songs by, <laughs> you know, and then we start mixing artists. It, yeah, I, I I tend to break the algorithm with really silly decisions. Yeah, I'm I'm curious what my uh, my discover weekly playlist will be uh, next week because I decided on like Tuesday I wanted to listen to Public Enemy, and usually usually my playlist is like uh, sort of like electronic alternative like indie al- indie electronic stuff uh, like churches and 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 stuff and and stuff that sounds like churches basically um and like and and uh so but like that combined that kind of vibe combined with uh public enemy enemy will be yeah interesting could be a good mix when a cowboy (laughs) trades his spurs for wings wait say again when a cowboy trades his spurs for wings so when a cowboy dies oh wow all right gary what is uh what time being told uh no inspired you the most I'm sorry. I started that song again. I missed part of what you said. Asking what me. part, <laughs> what time being told no inspired you the most? What part of this sentence did you not hear? <laughs> yeah, fair. Um, I don't know if anything really pops to mind, to be honest with you. Never. There's never a time when you like. I'm certain that we're told we're, we're told you can't be a programmer, and then you said, "Fuck you! I'm going to be a programmer." No, because I think in my head, I convolute a lot of me, me telling myself no with the rest of the world telling me no. So mm-hmm. I don't know that anything really stands out. Like, I'm my own worst public enemy. <laughs> That's right. So. <laughs> um, I, uh, in all seriousness, I am my own uh, worst critic. So I really Has feel that like ever inspired like, you? To like, I'm no, it usually ends and I'm like, boy, that guy Gary's an idiot after I do it <laughs> successfully. So instead of the takeaway being like, you were wrong, the takeaway is like, you dumbass, you said you couldn't do it. Like it's, yeah, it's the inverse of what it, I don't know. I, no, but I sometimes know. we do. I, I kind of. Sometimes we do things to prove ourselves wrong. At least I do. Like mm-hmm. I was like, I got my ears pierced just to prove to myself I could. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cared but me. <laughs> Um, and nobody was telling me no. <laughs> I mean, the thing that comes to mind are like a lot of work situations, but, but, you know, about that whole capitalist thing anymore. So <laughs> those aren't worth mentioning. Um, I like to pretend that you've just been in an incredibly nurturing environment. No one said no so much as guided you. <laughs> I mean, I'm a white American dude, so that's probably not far from the truth, right? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Valid, valid. Yep. Yeah, I can't think of any situation where someone said I mean, no, I, I've, I've been, been like this surly reactive, like, oh, I'm going to show you more like, all right, I well, I'll show did, you. I definitely <laughs> did in my teenage years. Like, See, I, I, I do were stupid things in my teen, teenage years. I feel like I was told no a number of times in my teenage years, and then I just took it to heart and didn't do those things. 
Yeah. Like you can't be a you can't be a writer because you can't make money being a writer. Okay, I won't be a writer. You can't be an actor because because nobody ever like it's really really hard. You don't get you won't get parts and whatever. So okay, I won't be an actor. Like ah, you different. can't drop out of college. Is probably one. You can't drop out of college because you won't be able to get a good career. Like oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> inspires you to drop. Right. Out. I mean, I, I don't know that inspiring you to drop out of college. I was I was out the door. You did, get a, you, you did you did you know fairly well anyway. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm happy. Yeah. 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 Out of My life has actually settled down out of college. Yeah. What year did you drop out? Uh, two thousand and. No, no, like when in the. Oh, I was a junior. Oh. Okay. Huh. Yeah, my junior year. Yeah. I, I always sort of I, imagined that it was earlier, like your sophomore year or something. No, I made it for two full years and then the first semester of the next year and was like, this ain't for me. Yeah, it would have been amazing if you were like it. 1983 oh, and we'd all be like, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter. We'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.